Today, China stands as one of the most powerful nations in the world, with a staggering GDP per capita of approximately 12,670 US dollars. However, a mere 40 years ago, China struggled to grapple with a poverty rate exceeding 90%, with its GDP amounting to a modest $230 billion. Now China contributes over 18% to the global GDP, effectively reducing its extreme poverty rate to below 1%. The remarkable transformation of China's economy from impoverishment to becoming the epicenter of global manufacturing stems from its industrial production and robust manufacturing exports. With major tech players such as Apple, Samsung, Microsoft, Sony, and Canon manufacturing a significant chunk of their goods in China, it is no surprise that nearly 90% of the world's electronics are produced within its borders. So how exactly did China emerge as the global tech manufacturing hub in just a matter of decades? Let's find out. Since Mao Zedong's regime in 1949, China prioritized education and women's rights, boosting literacy and fostering expertise in STEM fields, and forming a talent pool for technological advancements. After Mao's death, Deng Xiaoping initiated economic liberalization for shifting factory management responsibilities to workers and managers, and bringing a remarkable reduction in abject poverty. The workers working in the factory got an incentive to work harder because they got power and freedom to decide what they want to produce, the production rate, the selling price, and their wages. China also focused on technical and vocational education during this time, with a nine-year compulsory education policy introduced. With nearly 700 million skilled individuals employed in the manufacturing sector, China offered a rich pool of talent in the vegetable of patches. handling complex technological processes with precision and expertise. This is Toshi. Apple, Samsung, Microsoft, Sony, and Canon started their journey in China mostly due to its abundance of skilled labor and ensured smooth operations for these tech giants. The next development strategy of Deng Xiaoping was township and village enterprises, also known as TVEs. The purpose was to sprout economic growth in rural areas where people's living standards can be improved. One major quintessential TVE is Huawei Technologies. This company started as a TVE in 1987. Since then, they've grown to become the world's largest supplier of telecommunications equipment and the second largest manufacturer of smartphones. About 20% of China's total industrial output was from TVEs in the 1990s, responsible for generating millions of jobs. But this could only happen when people would be willing to be educated and skilled to do all this. As China reached this turning point, foreign companies began to invest in a nation brimming with talent and potential. By reaching this point, China made it possible to bring in foreign investments successfully as foreign companies get more keen to invest in the country where there are abundance of skilled people. The late 1980s and early 1990s witnessed key tech players solidify their presence in China. Canon Information Technology in Beijing Company Limited established its factories in 1989, followed by Samsung Group's intensified investments post the 1992 establishment of diplomatic relations between Korea and China. Microsoft in the same year set up its largest research and development center outside the United States, while Samsung founded Samsung China in 1995, and Sony China Company Limited opened its doors in 1996, underscoring China's growing allure as a global tech investment hub. With cheap labor, skilled and experienced people, and very little bureaucracy, China saw the emergence of the influential Shenzhen Special Economic Zone. In 1980, Shenzhen was nothing more than a small town inhabited by approximately 30,000 people. Today, that figure has skyrocketed to almost 18 million, rivaling the size of major global cities like New York and London. In 1980, its GDP was $0.3 billion. By 2020, it has reached $420 billion. With its specialization in electronics manufacturing, Shenzhen now proudly holds the title of the world's electronics manufacturing capital. Take the case of Apple as well, which tapped into China's manufacturing prowess by partnering with Foxconn, 
leveraging the company's robust supply chain network and unmatched scalability. Shenzhen's supremacy as a manufacturing hub can be attributed to several key factors. First, its strategic location as a pivotal gateway between mainland China and Hong Kong. It is one of the largest shipping centers in the world, with a massive container port. Secondly, Shenzhen was designated as China's inaugural special economic zone in 1980, fostering an environment conducive to enterprise through relaxed planning regulations and attractive tax incentives, attracting significant foreign investment and propelling its exponential growth. Shenzhen was established way back in 1980, meaning that the city has had over 40 years to grow into the manufacturing center of the tech world. Apple relies on a huge network of suppliers and subcontractors, some of which make just a single tiny component. The majority of them are based in Shenzhen and its immediate surroundings, so the logistics of bringing everything together in one place for assembly are straightforward. With over 47% of its exports directed to Asian countries, 22% to America, 19% to Europe, and around 4% each to Africa and Latin America, China undeniably reigns as the factory of the world. China's competitive edge in manufacturing primarily stems from its lower production costs. While labor costs in the United States can peak at $10 to $15 per hour, Chinese laborers in Shenzhen accept wages as low as $3 to $4 an hour. Additionally, China's increasing pool of skilled engineers and researchers engaged in pioneering technologies has further solidified its appeal for research and development. The Chinese workforce is a one-in-all package, and Apple has established several R&D centers across the country. China, with over 1.4 billion people, has earned the badge of being the world's largest consumer market. With a huge number of people in China, tech giants can sell their products directly to them without paying extra taxes. Since more people in China can afford to buy things, they see it as a good place to sell more products. Also, the things made in China are liked by people all over the world, showing how good China is for manufacturing products. For instance, Apple's top-notch products from Chinese production facilities are acclaimed worldwide, solidifying China's position in Apple's global supply chain. China offers a favorable regulatory environment for foreign companies luring them in with incentives and tax benefits. The government's substantial investments in infrastructure and technology further promote a manufacturing-friendly setting. China's infrastructure development extends beyond conventional domains, such as transportation, energy sources, and water conservancy. The country has ventured into the development of modern infrastructure, including 5G networks, artificial intelligence, industrial internet, and fiber-optic communication reflecting its commitment to embracing cutting-edge technological advancements. Along with this, the government made scientific research a priority and gave heavy fundings to science research centers. The money spent on research and development was gradually increased by the government, and in 2020, it crossed $500 billion. A big example of this is the Zonggunken Science Park in Beijing, that is a hub of technology and innovation. Many high-tech companies, research institutions, and universities are situated here. The growth in trade between the United States and China vividly illustrates China's soaring prominence in global manufacturing. Since 1985, trade between the two countries has increased by over 7,000%. In 2015, China surpassed Canada to become America's largest trade partner. Beneficial trade policies further facilitated this expansion with China exempting export taxes and the U.S. refraining from imposing customs fees on certain products, allowing goods to make their way from Chinese factories to U.S. stores entirely tax-free. China's rising labor costs have steered companies to shift their operations to countries like India and Vietnam, known for their comparatively lower labor expenses. In 2019, Samsung shut down its last smartphone factory in China, lured by the reduced labor costs in other Asian nations. Geopolitical concerns also played a pivotal role in this decision. Additionally, trade disputes, allegations of forced labor and child abuse in Xinjiang, and territorial conflicts in the South China Sea have amplified concerns about the stability of China's economy. Consequently, the future of China's economy appears to be on an uncertain trajectory. With an evolving economic landscape and shifting global dynamics, the future of China's role in the tech manufacturing sphere remains a topic of continued intrigue and exploration. 
As China navigates its own unique set of challenges, it remains a pertinent question as to which nation might potentially fill the void left by China.